Hi, I'm Mary Colbert. Welcome to Dr. Colbert's Divine Health Podcast. Hey there, we're excited today because I'm going to be talking about gout. And we've had a lot of requests to know more about gout. Yeah, I, you know, even though, Don, there's just a very small percentage of the population. Only about 4% of people here in the U.S. have gout, which yeah, is pretty it, low it, compared to diabetes, which is over. But people are looking for answers, and that's what we're committed to doing. We want to bring to you the latest, mo- most up-to-date information that you can take control of your health. A lot of you may feel like you've lost all control of your health and there's not a whole lot you can do. I want you to know there's a whole lot you can do. (laughs) Absolutely. And that is what we are wanting to do is to bring you information that will empower you to take and begin to follow and watch how God, God has an answer for every disease in the earth. He has an answer for everything. I but Mary, you know, the main thing fueling gout is our choices in foods. But Don, that's amazing that how many diseases are associated with wrong choices. Well, that's why I wrote the book years ago, Let Your Food Be Your Medicine, because if you choose a healthy diet, such as either uh, what I recommend for so many now is a healthy Mediterranean diet, and to lose weight for my diabetics, a healthy keto diet. And these diets are extremely important in helping people lose weight, but the Mediterranean diet is the key way to protect and prevent against gout. Okay, so today we're gonna address this uh, out of popular demand, this issue of gout. First, tell us exactly what gout is. Well, gout is a form of arthritis that's caused from high amounts of uric acid. You see, uric acid, when it's high, it causes these crystals, like needle-like crystals that form in your joints, usually in your big toe and and or the knee. It affects mainly men. The vast majority of people affected are men and usually of their older age men but also occurs in women, but we're seeing more gout because it's following the obesity epidemic and the type two diabetes epidemic. Wow. Because one thing that triggers gout is high insulin levels and realize that over 40% of Americans are now obese, over 40%. Yeah, and so right now, the typical treatment of gout is well, medicine, Medicine, right? yes. They, primary meds they use are usually allopurinol. And again, the meds, to treat chronic gout or allopurinol or euloric or probenicid and to treat acute gout, that's gout, a flare-up. Well, you, you see with gout, you have sudden pain. It's, it's intense, severe pain, typically in the big toe associated with redness. And it's so severe that even laying a sheet on top of the big toe will hurt. Like crazy. It's that, that severe of a pain. So it's like almost impossible to be able to walk. Oh, these people are this, this severe inflammation because they're needle-like crystals accumulating in this joint, usually in the big toe, but also in the knee and also in other in the feet. And there's redness and there's swelling and severe tenderness. And so what happens is doctors treat it generally with uh, colchicine or with NSAIDs such as endomethacin, or with corticosteroids. So these are common treatments, or so sometimes you use Celebrex too. These are common treatments for acute gout. Okay, Now, so when they do that treatment, they're not addressing the cause. Correct. They're addressing the symptoms. The symptoms, they're addressing inflammation because those type meds decrease inflammation, but also there's major side effects, especially if you have long-term inflammation. And for some people, if they're taking allopurinol, it can sometimes affect the liver in certain people, such as people from Korea or people from certain people from China or Thailand have a genetic Asian, makeup. Asian certain descent. Asian descents have a makeup where they're more prone to allopurinol hypersensitivity, which can have a mortality and or morbidity rate of as high as 25%. Well, what, let's clarify. Let's, let's dumb this down. That means death rate. They can die. They, they could die from okay. the medicine to treat it. So <laughs> yeah, that's wow. in the Koreans with chronic kidney disease, with the Han, H-A-N, Chinese, or with Thai descendants. They're more prone to allopurinol hypersensitivity and should be screened for the presence of HLA-B5801 allele prior to starting it. So, again, it comes with potential side effects, potentially deadly side effects. Now, what you're going to recommend for people to begin to, you know, practice in their daily life 
No well, side I've got effects. To, well, I got to educate them as the triggers. The key here, folks, okay. is their triggers. And there's, there's foods no side that are effects. triggers. No, these Safe. are foods. We're okay. letting your food be yeah. your medicine. Right. But okay. when you ha choose to have uh, diseases such as obesity, such as type 2 diabetes, insulin literally it raises uric acid levels, which trigger gout. See, it all, gout is simply a disorder of purine metabolism. People say, what purine? What is that word? Purine is simply chemical compounds that form uric acid. And it could be that you're genetically predisposed to this because you've inherited this from your mom or dad or your grandfather. Usually it's in the men. Or it could be from consuming high purine foods. And you say, what are high purine foods? That's a strange thing. Purines are found in certain meats primarily, especially in organ meats like liver and kidneys. Like when I was little, my favorite food when I was a little boy was fried chicken livers. <laughs> now I don't like them now. Gag, gag, but gag. When I I'm was sorry, a little that boy, just makes me sick to even hear that. And uh. Granny would cook me fried chicken livers, and she'd put them flour on them, and then she would put salt and pepper all over them, and it just made the best aroma, mm. and I just loved them, those Honey, fried you chicken livers. pepper and but can I tell <laughs> salted you, enough for me to eat. Also, <laughs> calf liver, kidneys, those are high purine foods, and they are major gout-triggering foods. But also red meat, red meat, excessive red meats like big porterhouse steaks, T-bone steaks, lamb chops. Lamb is high in purine. Now, these are triggers. These are triggers, yes. These are triggers also, that can shellfish. flare up gout. Shellfish, okay. think shellfish. Crab, lobster, shrimp, mussels, clams, oysters, crawdads. Any shellfish are high purine foods. And you say, well, I just ate one. Well, if you eat just a one or two, it's usually not a problem, but it's when you go to the all-you-can-eat buffet and eat crab legs or, or shrimp, all the shrimp you can eat, then you get into problems, and it's too, much, too many purines, and these purines raise, create uric acid, which precipitates out in the joint, usually the furthest joint from the heart, which is the big toe. And that's why that we see it. weird. Isn't that crazy how it works? Okay, weird. let's talk about other, other foods. Pork, poultry. Oily fish like sardines, tuna, anchovies, salmon. Wait, you say, I thought fish was good for you. It is, unless you have gout and a gout predisposition, because these fish are higher in purine. So you have to choose white fish. White fish are tilapia, cod, flounder, preferably wild, not farm-raised, but they're less likely to trigger gout. So, so the rules change if you have gout. Others are processed meat, bacon, salami, pepperoni, processed ham, these meats are high in purines. And another that most people don't realize is yeast. Yeast triggers gout in so many people. It can be baker's yeast, like yeast rolls. You see those big fluffy yeast rolls? They're gout triggers. Also brewer's yeast and beer. Beer is chuck full of brewer's yeast. Sure. And alcohol is a double-edged sword because not only are you getting the yeast from the beer, but also the alcohol dehydrates the body. And uh, the alcohol also causes your body to literally produce more uric acid. So it's interesting that the worst, food, uh, the worst alcohol for forming gout is beer, followed by spirits like, um, you know, rum, vodka, gin, rum, yeah, vodka. All of, right, bourbon. Mm -hmm. And then wine is less likely to cause gout. Uh, white wine is the least of all the alcoholic beverage. Red wine can still, still trigger, but white wine is the least likely to cause gout attacks. But so those are the key foods. Now, also, there's, there's uric acid or purines in certain veggies. Now, the veggies that contain purines are mushrooms, asparagus, beans, peas, lentils, and spinach. But according to the health professionals' follow-up study, people that ate a lot of the high purine veggies didn't develop gout. It's just the meats and the yeast that triggered the gout. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. So keep eating your asparagus. Mushrooms are fine. Keep eating your beans, peas, and lentils. Those generally don't trigger gout attacks because these are the vegetable source of purine. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. So another trigger besides high purine diet, we talked about excess alcohol, but also high fructose diet or high sugar diet. 
we find that fruit juices, orange juice, grape juice, apple juice, excessive amount of fruit juice triggers gout attacks by raising uric acid levels, as well as uh, high sugar fruits like bananas, oranges, grapes, mango, papaya, raisins, dates, any dried fruit, Mary, these will increase the risk of gout. Well, it sounds like things that are highly concentrated with sugar. Yeah, also it's the fructose. It's the fructose okay. is worse than sugar. Fructose is worse than glucose in triggering gout, as well as honey. Honey's high in fructose, as well as syrup, maple syrup. Even though it's good, it can set you up for a gout attack. Now, remember, we're letting your food be your medicine. These are gout-triggering foods I'm talking about. Another trigger would be fasting. It's not a food, but it's just fasting. When you fast, your body starts to catabolize or break down muscle, which will raise your uric acid level. So if you are prone to gout, please don't do a water fast or you're setting yourself up for gout. Other triggers uh, of gout are simply dehydration, not drinking enough water. This is a major cause, especially in this country, especially after working out and perspiring or being out working out in the sun or sunbathing, you're losing water. And, uh, or if you're in a dry climate, if you're in, in the desert, you like need, Arizona you're and... real prone to it. You got to drink water. Yeah. And if you have gout, they recommend you drink at least two to two and a half quarts of water a day wow. to stay hydrated wow. or else dehydration is one of the main triggers for gout. So you've got to stay hydrated. And we mentioned obesity. Certain diseases are associated with increased risk of gout, especially obesity, diabetes, high insulin levels literally cause high amounts of uric acid to be produced. So obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure predisposes you to gout. A common medicine that is a major gout trigger is diuretics. Now, we use diuretics to treat high blood pressure. So here a person has high blood pressure. They put them on, which predisposes them to gout. Then they put them on diuretics, which are water pills like hydrochlorothiazide or maxide, diazide. Uh, many are combination meds. Like, for example, I'll use lisinopril, HCTZ in some patients. I, I always check uric acid on every patient that comes into my office. So that is one thing you want to stress to the people listening yes. um, is that they should, when they go see their doctor, request this yes, as a Yes, because blood most doctors, unfortunately, they don't include uric acid anymore. It's not included. It used to be included in our comprehensive metabolic panel. It's not included anymore, and doctors rarely check it. So when someone comes to see me and I, I check uric acids on everyone, I say, oh, by the way, your uric acid's high or it's high normal. So they, then they can start addressing it right. and avoid sure. some of the pain that would because we can lower it yeah. generally with these methods. It's so easy to lower it without any meds. Yeah. You don't get into the side effects of meds. Another uh, common cause of high uric acid is low-dose aspirin therapy, especially in the elderly. Some people, for some reason, when they take that little 81-milligram dose of aspirin, low-dose aspirin can make their uric acid rise, whereas higher doses don't. So that's why if you are on a baby aspirin, you need that uric acid check because it may be raising it too much. Other causes would be kidney disease or triggers. Kidney disease and kidney failure are major triggers for gout. So if you have compromised kidneys, you're a setup for gout. Now, what can happen with gout not only can it cause severe pain in your joints, usually a big toe, it can also cause kidney stones, wow. uric acid stones, which are very painful. Another major reason to get that uric acid down so you don't form kidney stones. As far as other diseases that can trigger gout include leukemia, lymphoma, anemia. We talked about diabetes. Another tr rare trigger is lead toxicity. And sometimes we'll pick this up on... Uh, Heavy metals will do a heavy metal screen on their urine, and we'll find lead toxicity, and that can cause high uric acid in some people, but it's more rare, okay? Now, let's talk about as far as the symptoms. They usually, it starts, the pain of gout usually starts at night, at night, when, usually when you're asleep. It's a throbbing, excruciating pain, usually in the big toe or in the knee, and it usually subsides in hours to days. The pain is so severe that just laying a sheet on it hurts. It throbs. Gout back centuries ago was mainly found in kings and rulers who had 
lots of money to spend on lots of meats. People meats who ate lots of meat. Wine. And wine and lots of meats, and alcohol, alcohol, and yeah. sugar. Those yeah. are the main triggers right there. The, the king's table will kill you. <laughs> you got it. So how do we lower uric acid naturally? Well, first it starts with getting enough water, enough fluid intake. We generally, if you have, or if you're prone to gout or have a family history of gout, you need at least two quarts of water a day. Now, even more important, when you drink your water, add a squeeze, a wedge of lemon or lime to each eight ounce glass. And what that lime does, it alkalinizes your urine, which increases uric acid excretion. Now, don't put the sugar in there. If you put the sugar in there, make lime or lemonade, it's going to trigger your gout. It can trigger gout. But if you just use the, you say, well, what, what about lemons and limes? They have sugar in it. It's just a little bit of fructose. But the benefits of it, it alkalinizes your body and your urine, and it causes increased uric acid excretion. You know, I have to add a little side note here about lemon and lime, the power of drinking just lemonade without sugar, sweetened with stevia, or lime. And you do this all day long, which yeah, is great. If you will just, anybody you know that's battling cancer, if they would just do that one thing, eliminate all beverages of everything and only drink lemon and lime, watch what happens. Oh, it, it alkalinizes your body. And that is extremely important. Yeah. Because when that happens, when you alkalinize your body, you create an alkaline environment. An alkaline environment, your body's excreting toxins. And it creates that perfect pH for your cells. So your body becomes more resistant to disease. But especially with uric acid, what it does is it helps the body excrete that excess uric acid. Now, again, if you hate lemons, you hate limes, or you have acid reflux, a simple thing you can do is get Alka-Seltzer Gold. That's not Alka-Seltzer, not aspirin. It's Alka-Seltzer Gold from Amazon. And you take one little disc of Alka-Seltzer plop plop in four ounces of water, just one in the morning, one in the evening. It brings that pH usually up to around 7.0 to 7.5, which creates that alkaline environment in your body, which enables your body to excrete that uric acid. So that's great. But lemon and lime, I love lemon and lime. I put it in my water, lemon or lime, a wedge or two, and that without any sugar, I drink it plain. But you can use stevia or you can use a little erythritol, but stevia is I'm telling the best. you, one of our health crises that's happening in this country is high, le- high, high levels of being very acidic. acidic yeah. The acidity. Most Americans are acidic. It's amazing, guys. And I check this on every patient that comes and to see me. you become acidic drinking sodas. Very acidic. Very acidic. Coffee. Your, coffee. Too much coffee. You know, maybe one, one and a half cups will be fine, but that's it. Everything else that we're consuming in in liquids as a beverage is making us acidic. Exactly. It's scary what's happening. Right. So, again, and sugar makes you very acidic. And, again, I check a urinalysis on everyone, and that checks the pH of the tissues of the body. And the majority of my patients, it's around 5.0 to 5.5, which is a hundred times more acidic than it should be. Ideally, it should be 7.0 to 7.5. You say, wait, that's only two point, one, one and a half or two point. No, it's exponential. So it's actually, if you go from 7.5 to 5.5 or 7.0 to 5.0, that's a hundred times more acidic than it should be. And when our body is acidic, that's literally a breeding ground for disease to occur. That is so simple. Especially for just, gout. And this is especially is so for simple. gout. It's too yeah. simple. When the body's acidic, you are set up for gout. It's that simple. So water is one of the key things. And then a healthy Mediterranean diet. Now, listen to this. I wrote about this in my book. It's beyond keto. You can do the keto, healthy keto. Now, there is a healthy keto diet and an unhealthy. Unfortunately, about 95% of keto diets are unhealthy. This is the healthy keto diet with healthy forms of protein. You're not getting the huge amounts of red meat and pork and bacon and processed meats and shellfish, but you're getting the healthy fish, the healthy proteins and the right amounts and the healthy fats. You're not getting butter and cheese and cream, all those foods that raise cholesterol, but you're getting the olive oil, the avocado oil, the avocados, the seeds and nuts. And then you're getting the low carbs, you're getting the veggies, you're getting the fiber, you're getting the berries, you're getting what your body needs to become disease resistant. Now, this is how it works. Okay, when when you're on a Mediterranean diet, your body literally, 
you want to lose weight gradually with gout. If you lose weight rapidly, you're more prone to break down muscle, which can then cause gout attacks. Or if you eat an unhealthy keto diet, your body becomes very acidic and you're more prone to gout attacks. But a Mediterranean diet, you lose weight slowly and you don't get the gout attacks that a person would get on a keto diet unless you're on a healthy keto diet like I talk about. So either the healthy keto diet or the healthy Mediterranean diet, which I talk about both in my book, Beyond Keto is Healthy for You. Also, um, next would be decreasing or eliminating sugars and sodas and honey and agave nectar and syrup and all the sweet fruits we talked about and especially the dried fruits and because that literally sets you up for high uric acid and gout. As far as we find cherry supplements or eating cherries is one of the best things you can do to prevent gout attacks. A study found that in 633 patients with confirmed gout for a year, those who consumed a half a cup of cherries a day, which is equivalent to 10 to 12 cherries a day or the equivalent in a cherry fruit extract, decreased their risk of gout by 35%. Decreased wow. the risk of a gout attack by 35%. Wow. Just cherries. Now, what's interesting in that study is that there was no significant change in the uric acid levels. Their uric acid levels still were on the high side, but yet they didn't get gout. So cherries protected them from a gout attack. Can you imagine if you can take either cherries or cherry fruit extract, drink the water, follow the diet? It'll really bring that uric acid level down. Also, we find soy protein. Soy protein can increase uric acid levels. So avoid soy protein consumption since, in, since it increases uric acid. We talked about alcohol. If you're going to drink alcohol, white wine is, has the least effect on raising uric acid than any other form of alcohol. And then we find that long-term coffee consumption decreased the risk of gout. So for all you coffee lovers, and here's my coffee, it does decrease the risk of gout tremendously. Now, what they found is coffee contains a powerful phytonutrient called chlorogenic acid, which prevents insulin resistance. Remember, insulin raises uric acid levels. Coffee lowers insulin levels, preventing gout. It also has antioxidant properties, and it inhibits xanthine oxidase, which helps to uh, lower the uric acid. See, that's that enzyme that produces uric acid. It lowers that. It inhibits xanthine oxidase. So coffee is wonderful at preventing gout. They say the more coffee you drink, the better for preventing gout. So people that have heard this about the diet and they're sitting here listening But don't put to sugar you. in it. Don't put sugar in your right. coffee. <laughs> but they're listening to you and some of the men, I know they're listening to this and you were talking about crabs and fish and all, and they're like, man, that's my whole diet. You know, Dr. <laughs> Colbert's taking this. Right. So. Okay. For those men, here's what you do. Okay. Let's say you're a crab lover. You go for a crab feast or a shrimp feast, or you eat a T-bone steak, or you eat a porterhouse steak, or, or you they eat, like lamb or you chops. eat ribs, ribs. Here's what you do. After, within an hour of eating that, you get either my fiber zone or psyllium husk powder, and you take a tablespoon to a heaping tablespoon and four to eight ounces of cold water, stir it up real quick, drink it, and what it does, it binds the, ex the fats and the meat and literally es escorts, escorts it out of the body, okay? That's, so this that's will help powerful. enable you. So this will cover, I tell my patients, <laughs> fiber covers a multitude of sin. Now, Mary wouldn't drink psyllium husk powder. So I had to develop, and my food scientist did this, I didn't, a fiber supplement that actually tastes good right. that you, my, my wife literally enjoys taking it. But again, you got to drink it quick and mix it with cold water. Don't let it sit right, or form like oatmeal. Right, because I like desserts. And, she, you and know, it's flavored with stevia and, and natural so flavor. what I'll do is we go to dinner like we just did a birthday dinner with Don and some friends mm. and... We mm -hmm. did the unusual desserts, which we normally never do. I never do. But desserts. I went home and immediately Same did here. the fiber, right? So that it because it binds bind excess sugar. sugar. Yeah, it binds excess sugar, but also it binds those meats, right. those gout-forming meats like the excessive red meat, the shellfish, and all of that. Okay? Right. So that works, and so there's some natural an answers you can do without being just horribly restrictive in your eating. Yeah. But yet, if you suffer from gout and you get extreme gout, mm -hmm. you might want to avoid these 
meats and foods. Excessive amounts. And at least if you go have your meat, maybe right. once a week, make sure you carry your fiber. Have it within an hour of eating the meat. And that will help. Now, Mary, there's another supplement like cherries that works amazing at preventing gout. Okay. Which is vitamin C. That's exciting. Ascorbic acid, just uh, not, usually. Not orange juice. No, not orange juice. You can't have the sugar with it. Now, right, if you have the sugar, you right. just signed up for gout. People got to hear but this. Vitamin yeah. C or ascorbic acid lowers the, the uric acid, yeah, by okay. increasing the excretion of uric acid in the urine. Okay. And it just takes 500 milligrams once or twice a day. That's it. That's amazing. Now, what's amazing is ascorbic acid or vitamin C has an acidifying effect. But the mild acidification effect of the urine causes an increase in uric acid excretion, whereas the lemons and limes have an alkalinizing effect. Now you say, well, what if I do one with the other? Well, you could do that, but again, both will work. I alkalinize my urine daily with the uh, lemons or limes, and then I occasionally take my Alka-Seltzer Gold, which is wonderful for you. You know what is so powerful about this is that nothing that Don is recommending has side effects. It's only beneficial to your health. Now, the only other thing you do want to be careful, you don't want to take the fiber along with other meds at the same time. Or with supplements. Or with supplements, because it binds. So it will bind up your medicine or your supplements you're taking. So you do need to do Separate your about an hour apart. Yeah, about yeah. an hour away. And, uh, but yet you can still do that. Now, also, we have found for those people that get gout attacks, and I've had... Uh, over the last 35 years, I've seen some horrible cases of gout. I remember a fellow from Bogota, Colombia, years ago who came to see me. He had the worst gout I've ever seen, and the doctors didn't have him on any medicine. He had his elbows stuck out, bony prominences stuck out from his elbow like uh, uh, stalactites or stalagmites, Mary. It was amazing. Literally, it stuck out like four or five inches. I couldn't believe it. And on his heels, he couldn't wear regular shoes because it stuck out from his heel and bunions that were just huge. And I said, uh, and he was a fairly wealthy man. I said, have they not been treating you with medicine for this? He said, well, they gave me some allopurinol, a low dose, 100 milligrams a day. I said, 100 milligrams, your level of uric acid is 10 you got to get it down below six in order to stop this. So wow. we got it down below six, and we saw those tophi. They're called tophi, which are like the calcified um, prominences on the joints, especially on the elbows, on the knees, on the heels, now, I've seen people on the bunions. With those things. Is that gout? No, that, that's a rheumatoid oh. arthritis, oh, too. Oh, okay. But again, that's what happens is they form these tophi, we call it, or gout bony prominences that literally look like they're deformities that occur. So another fellow I had with gout who was a minister. Well, before you move on, did, did he, he improved guy? dramatically, dramatically. They okay. started regressing. The doctors couldn't believe it down there. But I got his uric acid down. Now, I used natural methods, but I also had to use meds. In his case, I used a much higher dose of allopurinol. Yeah. And then I had okay. to go over that. He was a meat eater. He loved meat. He loved lamb. He loved shellfish. I had to say, hey, you're asking for this. Yeah. And, of course, he loved some alcohol and sugar, yeah. okay? And he loved the mangoes and the papayas, You're which invited gonna him. You're just going to have to crucify right. the flesh for a while. You got to. Got to. Now, also, for inflammation, if you have a severe gout attack and it's hurting you very badly in your big toe or in your knee or in your elbow. Warning, warning. Then we have natural things. Now, your doctor will want to use cortisone or NSAIDs, which have side effects, long-term side effects. Or they use commonly endomethacin, which is endocin, or cortisone injections, or, or medrol, medrol dose pack, or prednisone. But again, what I use is I use something natural for these people who go out and cheat, and all of a sudden they wake up with severe pain in their big toe or wherever. I use curcumin. And we use curcumin in a dose of 1,000 milligrams, usually one or 2,000 milligram tabs twice a day, combined with boswellia which is frankincense, by the way, AKBA, 100 milligrams, one or two twice a day. When you combine that higher dose curcumin with the boswellia, it is amazing how it suppresses inflammation, along with the cherry fruit extract, at least three twice a day, but sometimes six or as much as 10 twice a day. And when you combine all of those, the curcumin, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams twice a day with the Boswellia AKBA, 100 milligrams, one to two twice a day with the cherry fruit extract, and then alkalinize the urine with lemons or limes or Alka-Seltzer Gold, 
boom, it's a lifesaver. And that's wow. what it did for them and, and this patient. And it kept them off of these powerful anti-inflammatories that wreak havoc on your system and cause wow. high blood pressure, and decreased blood flow to the kidneys. So, and then the vitamin C and the water. You got to drink you know, a lot of water. That's the key. Listening to Don's like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. <laughs> well, you can I rewind that, it. <laughs> I know. That's just what I was going to say. You know, the, he is spewing out, I know, a lot of information but what's great about this is you can listen to it over and over and over and over again till you it totally makes sense to you. So everything that you're recommending is natural it's supplements. It's all natural, yeah. And you can get these supplements at health food stores. Right. You can get them well, on Amazon. We have Amazon. the fiber now. We have the fiber. We and have it covers the best a multitude fiber. of dietary sins. Can't beat our fiber. And we have fiber. a bigger bottle coming out here in the next month. Yeah, that'll last people longer because so, people are going through it so quickly. But anyway, so we're trying so, to So that. let's kind of summarize, Mary. Do. Because it's really simple. Okay. And if you have questions, you can go back through. The key is, number one, in summary, what you want to do is first drink a lot of water. If you have a problem with gout, you want to drink at least two to two and a half quarts of water a day. Alkalinize your urine by squeezing lemon or lime in it or get some Alka-Seltzer Gold from Amazon. Number two, decrease those purine foods. Purine foods are simply organ meats. Remember, kidneys, livers. I love chicken livers, but I don't eat them anymore. Also red meat and lamb and goat and pork and even excessive chicken and even your fatty fish that are healthy for most people. You've got to min minimize those as well as processed meat, but especially your shellfish, which is your crab, your lobster. And I just had crab this past weekend on my birthday. And guess what I had afterwards? A heaping tablespoon of fiber to bind it. it covers a multitude of dietary sins. But also remember yeast, yeast, yeast. And this is a major key for me because I used to have candida. I wrote a book on it over 20 years ago. People with candida or yeast or people that eat yeast rolls or take beer that's full of brewer's yeast are more prone to gout. And years ago, over 25 years ago, I checked my uric acid and it was high normal. Not high, but high normal. I said, this is weird. Well, I Lo and behold, I had a condition called candida or sifo, small intestinal fungal overgrowth. And Don, you were a very big meat eater. I there, was a big meat eater at one like time. You used nothing like Nothing like that. I only I eat know. like three or four ounces of meat per serving now. Yep. But what I did is I corrected my gut. I took nystatin to kill off the excess yeast. I took probiotics. I healed the lining of the gut with L-glutamine and literally got rid of the yeast. And then I took fiber to move out the yeast. And so, again, I wrote a book on this years ago called Bible Cure for Candida. I've since then written a book called Dr. Cobert's Gut Zone and literally a healthy gut zone because the gut zone, I talk about sifo, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, because that causes a gout too, and it causes high uric acid. But I kind of strayed off. Getting back to summary, number one, water. Number two, a healthy Mediterranean diet or a healthy keto diet. And minimizing those purines is the key, as well as reducing the intake of uh, sugar, sugar, sugars, as well as alcohol, and of course the purine foods, and then taking cherry extract or eating cherries. Now you say, don't cherries, aren't they high in sugar? Well, they're not as high in sugars as grapes, uh, but about 10 or 12 cherries a day, or even better, if you have a sugar issue, take cherry fruit extract. There's no sugar in it. And you take at least, start with three twice a day. And then take the vitamin C. Start with 500 milligrams a day. You can take it twice a day. And let's see, as far as coffee. Coffee also, remember, coffee definitely helps to get rid of uric acid. So have your coffee. I've got mine here. I've had, I usually have two or three cups a day. And that protects you against gout. But remember, most importantly, stay hydrated. And add that lemon or lime to it. To your health. God bless you. God bless you. I <laughs> hope this is a blessing to you. And be sure to visit our website, drcolbert.com or divinehealth.com, and you can get a hold of his books and our supplements. Thank you for listening. Be sure to share this with your friends and family. Give them this information. We're doing this for free to get the information to you because a lot of people can't afford to come see Dr. Colbert as a patient. So that's why we do this. It's for you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>